What can you do to boost your personal immunity in this time we're facing of a pandemic of COVID-19? For the answer, stay tuned. Hi everybody, it's Dr. Timothy. I've been back from India for about two weeks and actually just coming to the end of my 14 day self quarantine since I flew through Abu Dhabi and Dulles Airport, I figured I should assume I'm infected. Uh, and I have been, like many of you, just staying at home. Now, I've also been consuming a lot of information uh, on COVID-19 from multiple sources. And one thing that I've noticed is three different physicians interviewed on different news programs, cable news programs, etc., saying when asked what could people do to boost their immunity, and the doctors each answered nothing. Now, this is crazy. Even from a conventional medical standpoint, this is crazy. Because we know that how much you sleep has a profound effect on uh, your immune system. This is not quackery. This is hard and fast good science that demonstrates this. People who don't sleep enough uh, become progressively impaired in their immune function over time. It can lead to both too much immune function, as in the case of autoimmune disease, and it can lead to an undermining uh, of immunity, which is what, of course, we're really worried about here when we're facing this viral threat. It has also been well shown in conventional medical science that your diet has a profound effect on immune function. Now, yoga, Ayurveda, have different ideas uh, uh, about nutrition than conventional medical science, but they're consistent with con conventional me medical science in most regards. And one of the things that they teach in yoga is that food should be high in prana. That is ideally fresh, organic is better than non-organic, local is better than non-local, consume it the day you buy it is better than consuming it a week later. All those things that yoga would say increase the prana in the food, the life energy in the food, but also, of course, the vitamin content is going to be higher if you do this, level of antioxidants is going to be higher, many beneficial things. This is not controversial. Third thing is a lack of exercise can can impair the immune system. So we want to, even if we are stuck at home, uh, to try to, if possible, get outside uh, or at the very least exercise indoors, do something to keep your blood pumping, to keep, of course, also helps with the mood. And I know that many of us are having a lot of anxiety right now that we know that exercise can help with that. So that's another potential benefit of exercising. So we've got diet, we've got exercise, we've got sleep. And of course, this is less accepted in medical science, but really there is increasing scientific data to support the idea that stress reduction can also play a role in improving the function of your nervous system and via the nervous system, improving your uh, ability to fight infections, your immune function. Okay, now the immune system is divided into two basic components. There's the innate immunity, and then there's the specific immunity. Specific immunity is things like specific T cells and antibodies that are trained to respond to a certain virus or a certain bacteria, uh, that type of thing. Whereas the innate immunity is what we do when we're facing some kind of new threat, one that the body hasn't seen before. And since this is a novel coronavirus, meaning a new one that nobody, except for people in the last month or two, has developed immunity to it. So if you haven't had this coronavirus, you are potentially susceptible to it. And so therefore, the better the state of your innate immune system, the better off you are. And I believe there's every reason to think that yoga and Ayurveda and lifestyle decisions can make a huge difference in improving your innate immunity. And I offer my own experience, obviously just anecdotal, but my own experience as a, as a case in point. As many of you know, a little over three years ago, I completed treatment for 
a HPV related uh, tonsil cancer that it's that it metastasized a stage 4a cancer that I had and I underwent chemotherapy and radiation both of which impair immune function uh, my lymphocyte count one of the main white cells as part of the immune system has never recovered it's only about three quarters of normal right now so at least on paper it would appear that my immune system is impaired but I have had a daily yoga practice, I'm a meditator, I do pranayama, I do Ayurvedic treatments including oil massages. I just, as you know, got back from India where I was undergoing intensive Ayurvedic treatments designed to improve my immune function in part. And the fact is that in the last three years when I'm theoretically not at a normal immune function, I have had one cold that lasted one day. And otherwise, I have stayed completely healthy for the last three years. I have been living with other people who are sick, and I don't get it. This has been my experience. Now, this, of course, is no guarantee. And again, this is not a scientific experiment. This is an anecdote. But I feel strong, and I check my Ayurvedic pulse in Ayurveda, and I'm going to be doing another a video about Ayurveda uh, for COVID-19, uh, but my Ayurvedic pulse shows that my ojas, which is the thing that in Ayurveda is correlated with immune function, my ojas is very high. And when I completed my chemotherapy, my, lo my ojas was abnormally low and I steadily built it up over the first year out. So that is something I can measure on pulse and that was happening with my yoga, Ayurveda, dietary changes, all the things I did. Now if you want to learn more about how I did this, uh, you might want to check out my book called Saving My Neck, A Doctor's East-West Journey Through Cancer. Um, I have a lot of details about how I made decisions, how I evaluate the scientific data, etc. One thing that I do uh, in America is I brought back Ayurvedic oils, although you can certainly get good Ayurvedic oils in, in the United States and Europe and other countries, uh, but I brought back some lovely oils from India and about four times a week I have been applying oil to my skin, leaving it on for about a half an hour, which of course in this dry winter air has been uh, quite helpful uh, just for the sake of my skin, but is meant to have, according to Ayurveda, lots of therapeutic benefits, including keeping down vata, which is associated with fear and anxiety. Again, more on that in the Ayurveda video. But what I do then, instead of, for example, doing a steam treatment, which often comes after that in India to kind of, they say, drive the oils even deeper into the skin, I've been taking a hot bath after each of these treatments. And there's some very interesting data I've just come across recently that shows that heat exposure, that's enough to raise your core body temperature a couple of degrees, seems to have beneficial effects on the immune system. And part of the reason why fever is so useful in viral infections is that fever makes it harder for the virus to survive. Okay, and, and so basically if you have uh, a cold or you have COVID-19, you should not be taking Tylenol or ibuprofen just to lower your temperature. That is, does not make sense. You're actually potentially impairing your innate immunity by doing this. And in fact, I just came across some research that showed that people in Finland who do these extremely hot dry saunas followed by uh, immersing themselves in cold water very quickly, repeatedly back and forth, that both the raising and lowering of the core body temperature seems to activate the immune system, particularly the innate immunity. It appears that the white blood cell type that the coronavirus seems to target in particular when it tricks the immune system into not reacting as strongly as it should is by suppressing a type of white blood cell called monocytes. And these studies from Finland on people in the sauna and, hot and cold water are showing 
increased monocyte levels. Now these are not clinical trials, we don't know yet. The numbers from Finland so far are lower than neighboring countries, but obviously we don't know yet. But I think if you've got a bathtub and you can put a little oil on your skin and then take a hot bath, be careful not to slip, um, absolutely it's worth something you can try. Try to make your diet as high in prana as you can. That can be hard. I've been on quarantine for 14 days. I don't have fresh food. I mean, I have some fresh vegetables, but they've been sitting, some of them in my fridge for a couple of weeks now. That's not ideal. So what am I doing? I've been sprouting mung beans and sprouting broccoli seeds and then putting fresh sprouts in my morning oatmeal. Not something you usually think about going in oatmeal, but actually they taste good and I've enjoyed it and, and I definitely feel like it's helping me get some good antioxidants and, and from a yogic and Ayurvedic perspective, more high prana fresh food, at least some of what I'm eating is that. So um, many blessings to all of you if you're at risk, if you've already been infected, if you have family members who are infected, if you're a healthcare worker or other needed person who's in harm's way, uh, we have our best hopes and prayers for you all. Uh, okay, thank you all so much. Take good care. Namaste.